impartiality as new requirements for morality. Let us first define reason. What is reason? Reason is a basis or motive for an action, decision, or conviction. Reason refers to the capacity for logical, rational, and analytic thought. Reason is for consciously making sense of things, establishing and verifying acts, applying common sense and logic, and justifying, and if necessary, changing practices, institutions, and beliefs based on existing or new existing information. Second is impartiality. What is impartiality? Impartiality involves the idea that each individual's interest and point of view are equally important. Impartiality is a principle of justice holding that decisions ought to be based on objective criteria rather than on the basis of bias, prejudice, or preferring the benefit to one person over another for improper reasons. My question is, how can we make reasoned and impartial decisions? Simply, reason and impartiality became the basic prerequisite for morality as one is expected to be able to deliver vivid, concise, rightful, and appropriate judgments made out of logic and understanding in an unbiased and unprejudiced manner while considering the general welfare to accurately form moral decisions. So reason, reason and impartiality requires general, general welfare of all, not only for someone or something. Okay, let us move to the seven-step moral reasoning model. Number one, gather the facts. Some moral dilemmas can be resolved just by clarifying facts of the case in question. But in more complex case, gathering facts is the indispensable first step before any et ethical analysis and reflection on the case. One must know the available facts at hand as well as facts that are unknown, yet highly needed to be determined. For example, when you heard rumors, first, you must gather facts to clarify things. Second, determine the ethical issues. The moral ethical issues should be correctly is stated in terms of competing interests. It is these conflicting interests that practically make, make for a moral dilemma. For example, after knowing, after knowing the facts about the rumors, you need to identify the problems and issues that causes a conflict. Third, identify the principles that have a bearing on the case. In any moral dilemma, there are sure moral values or principles that are vital to the rival positions being taken. It is very significant to recognize these principles. And in some cases, to decide whether some, some principles are to be weighed more heavily than others. For example, after knowing the facts about the rumors, you go to the respective people who are involved to the rumors and ask them what is happening and know their side for you to weigh their principles. Fourth, list the alternatives. This step includes coming up with various alternative courses of action as part of the creative thinking included in resolving a moral dilemma. Though, there will be some alternatives which can be ruled out without much thought. In general, the more alternatives that are listed, the better the chance that your list will include some high-quality ones. Also, it may come up with some very creative alternatives that might had not considered before. For example, 
think some solutions to the rumors is spreading too quickly. We must think of some solutions that could possibly or surely resolve the rumors that you've heard. Fifth, compare the alternatives with the principles. It involves eliminating alternatives according to the moral principles that have a bearing on the case. In many cases, the case will be resolved at this point, since the principles will remove all alternatives except one. For example, call both sides involved in the said rumors and tell them what solutions came up to your mind to settle their case. In this point, some conflicts are solved but some are not because of misunderstanding. 6. Weigh the consequences. If the principles do not produce a clear decision, then a consideration of the consequences of the remaining available alternatives is in order. For example, if the solutions that you have suggest doesn't settle the conflict against the both sides, ask both sides to give their, their opinion to settle them or give their time to explain with each other number seven make a decision since deliberation ought not to go on forever a decision must be made at some point it must be realized that one common element to moral dilemmas is that there are no easy and painless solutions to them normally the decision that is made is one that possesses the least number of problems or negative consequences not one that is devoid of them for example after all let them decide let the two involved decide on how can they settle the conflict to the both of them and be their way to have a win-win situation in making a decision we must consider all aspects before deciding these seven a step in moral reasoning model can help a conflict to be resolved easily or to be resolved step by step just by not just by gathering facts not just by not just by talking or explaining both sides but we must we must consider the step by step for us to come up with uh, for us to come up, up, come up with a decision that would make us feel better. I need to know if you are listening very well. Let us enumerate the seven step moral reasoning model. Number one, gather the facts. Number two, determine the ethical issues. Number three, identify the principles that have a bearing on the case. Number four, list the alternatives. Number five, compare the alternatives with the principles. Number six, weigh the consequences. Number seven, make a decision.